ladies and gentlemen, the Chupacabra on Revenge. This is a red ale, and uh, it's my uh, very first beer I've made, so uh, it could be good, it could be absolutely horrible. It is, um, it's a little darker than your traditional red ale, just mainly because I uh, did it in a primary fermenter and never transferred it over to secondary, but uh, hopefully it'll uh, be pretty good. Not too much head, but that's mainly because it was uh, bottle carbonated, so the carbonation isn't going to be as powerful as a CO2 system, but uh, aroma's good. It smells very delectable. Mm. Ooh. Mm, this is interesting. So it's not really hoppy, not very much bitterness, but it's, uh, it's definitely got a malt characteristic to it, and um, the aftertaste is... Um, Very interesting. It's kind of a, a flowery, zesty kind of aftertaste, but um, it's a pretty good beer. I mean, for the first beer I've made, I think it's pretty good, but uh, now for a little background history on the, the Chupacabra Revenge title. Um, I named this beer the Chupacabra Revenge because I, uh, when I first originally was planning on uh, brewing beer, I uh, wanted to, um, to get the best beer recipe ever in the history of man, so I uh, I started searching all over the world and um, you know went to uh, Germany, went over to France, but France doesn't make any good beers, uh, went over to Italy, but um, I landed back in Mexico just uh, cruising around Mexico City, just kind of going from one hole in the wall to the next, just looking for a beer that just uh, was amazing. And um, I came across this, uh, this bar owner, his name was Juan, who, uh, who said that uh, there's a beer that comes out of the south, like way down to the south, like near, near the border of Guatemala. And um, and he's not quite sure where it comes from, but uh, it comes from a, there's a town called Zendales that uh, that it's kind of originated from, but um, nobody in Zendales really knows exactly where it comes from. So um, my problem was is uh, I, I couldn't find a translator because I don't I don't speak Spanish, and uh, the bar owner he spoke English, so he's pretty easy to talk to, but uh, I couldn't find a translator. So um, while I was actually in that bar. I met uh, an, an American, his name was Paul, who, uh, who only spoke German fluently, but uh, nonetheless, we, uh, I grabbed Paul and said, hey, you never know when you need a German-speaking American. So we, uh, we were started our, our journey south because we wanted to get there as quickly as possible, and uh, along our way, we ran into uh, a German guy, John, who uh, spoke uh, Spanish. So we had a German who speaks Spanish, an American who speaks German, so I had my, uh, my translator. So uh, we continued down and um, we got probably about 100 miles from uh, Zendales or where we believed it was. It's a little tiny remote town in the mountains. So we, uh, we actually hired ourselves some, uh, a couple Mexican guys who said, we know where it is, we'll, uh, we'll help you out. So we, um, it's, there's no roads or anything to it, we kind of had to bushwhack our way through the jungle because, like I said, we're as far south, we're just uh, north of Guatemala. So, uh, um, unfortunately on the way, one of the, uh, the, there's three Mexican guys with us and one of, the, one of them got bit by some spider and he died. So I told the other two guys to, uh, to take him back and um, so we continued on our way. So we, uh, we actually found our way, it took about two weeks to find our way to Zendales and, um, and they said that there's this beer that is uh, that comes down from the mount. There's this mountain that Zendales was right at the foot of called called uh, Mount Agujera en la Tierra, which actually means Mount Hole in the Ground. But it's actually it's no hole in the ground. It's quite the mountain. So uh, we uh, hold on. Ooh, that's good beer. Anyways, um, so we uh, we uh, decided. You know, we got to, that's where, where was I? We got to the town of Zendales and um, right at the base of the mountain. They said uh, that once a year, only about four gallons of beer comes down on the back of a donkey. And that there's, um, there's uh, a man up there. They only know him as El Sabio, which means the wise man. So they think he's out there, but nobody's seen him in years. And they're not sure if he's the one that makes this beer, but it's, it's the greatest beer that's ever, ever, you know, faced, been on the face of this planet. So. So uh, me and uh, my two interpreters, we, we start to climb up the mountain and it takes like three days because we're bushwhacking through the jungle and we finally get up there and uh, we find the donkey that this comes down on. So we, we knew we were pretty close. And uh, 
So we go to the eastern side of the mountain and we find El Sabio and he is, uh, he lives in this little tiny one-man hut and he, uh, he graciously gave me his recipe. Of course, I'm not quite sure how accurate it was because I had to translate it through a, a German who speaks Spanish and an American who speaks German. So um, I got it and then, uh, you know, we made our way back down the mountain to uh, Zendales again and um, the two interpreter guys, they decided that they were going to hike out, to continue the hike out. I was going to stay in Zendales for the night and kind of try and study the recipe as best as I could. But um, in the middle of the night, the, the people in Zendales had, uh, had agreed to, uh, to give me a nice little hut for the night. But in the middle of the night, you know, I was sleeping with the recipe when, uh, when I heard this like, rah, rah, and I was like, what was that, you know? And uh, something came into my tent and um, it was like a little little pig lizard thing and, um, and I was like oh my gosh it's a chucacabra the chucacabra in Mexico is kind of like the Bigfoot in North America it's completely folklore nobody believes it but uh but I'm a believer because that thing attacked me was scratching me biting me and finally it clubbed me over the head with a rock and when I came to I was like you know the recipe was gone the, the stupid chup chupacabra stole my recipe I was like, no, that's like the best recipe ever. And um, so the next morning I was like, oh, chupacabra, chupacabra. Well, unfortunately, if you say chupacabra in a, uh, in a town in Mexico, they, they think that it's gonna bring the chupacabra and rain down, you know, it's gonna create havoc in the town. So they're all chasing me saying, you're bringing the chupacabra on me in Spanish. You know, so I, I'm hightailing it out of, you know, Zendales, so I, uh, unfortunately, I had to get out of Mexico as fast as I could before, you know, these, these people caught up to me and killed me, so. Anyways, so, uh, the Chupacabra stole my recipe, and I, uh, probably won't be able to go back for some time to see if I can get it from El Sabio again. So this beer is my, my revenge to, uh, eventually return and get the recipe and have my revenge against the Chupacabra, so, um, Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, next week we have Blackbeard's Delight coming up. And, yep, yeah, start home brewing if you don't. Keep home brewing if you do. And um, if you want some of this beer, contact me.